Hi there, Chris Fox here. We got, uh, I'm up to Waterloo Central today and uh, we're working on 6006, which is inside the shop here. This uh, RDC 9. And <clears throat> Brian Chris and myself, Matt Schilling, were up here yesterday and uh, we were working on this truck. And what we had found is this car was sitting for so long that the journal box wasn't sliding in the pedestals. So <clears throat> they were frozen. So what we had to do is jack this up and um, replace a this liner which is right here that's the other liner there we only need to replace one because ice had gotten in behind it bubbled it pinched the box and the box couldn't ride so essentially if you've ever had a model train and it's derailed it's probably because the track was not uh, super uh, level and the, the truck kind of does a, a three-point landing because this doesn't float. The reason why these stay on rough track is because the journal box can slide up and down away from the truck frame. We have, this isn't the only one that's like this. We have other ones on this car and we'll be getting into that and I'll show you down here. So on axle number four here, we have a seized a seized box. The difference is, is that you can tell here, it has, there's no movement. You can see right here that there's no movement at all, no evidence of movement. We took it out on the line as well, and it does not move. There is no movement in that at all. It is, it is solid. And <clears throat> if you look closely, you can see the weld that holds the this is the pedestal. This is the pedestal wear plate, that little quarter inch piece of steel in there. And then this is the journal box. You can see it's cracked. The weld that holds the wear plate on is cracked. And you can actually see it bowed out here, pinching the box and back. So in here, between the pedestal and the uh, wear plate, there's rust. And what's happened is, is that freeze thaw, moisture gets in there, rust, freezes, and well, there's so much pressure, it's popped that, and this now, basically in here, is bowed. And it's pressing against and frozen the box. So what we have to do is take this apart, remove this uh, wear plate, and then put a new wear plate in, clean up the, the uh, pedestals, and we're good to go. At, the sh at, a, at, a, at a fully functional railway shop, you'd use the drop table, and you'd drop the wheel right out, clean everything up, take it all apart, everything would be fine. Here, <laughs> we can't. It's pretty good, this shop. doesn't have a drop table, though. So we actually have to jack the truck frame up from underneath leave the wheel on the ground but if we jack it up right now the wheel's going to come with it so we have to do some fancy stuff here to, to be able to free that up but the truck frame has to come up the journal box has to come down and we don't want to take the journal out of the um, pedestals uh, not while it's on the floor but we want to get it up high enough that we can uh, remove the uh, wear plate and then we'll replace it with a new one. I'll show you what the new one looks like in a bit. Uh, yesterday, Brian Kraus and myself did the other one down the other end there, as well as Matt Schilling gave us a hand there. Uh, Brian can't be with me today, so I'm up here just uh, gonna attempt this one. So let's uh, get after it. Okay, so we've taken the pedestal tie bar off. That's the bar that goes from here to here that holds the pedestals in place. That's what they look like and there's the pedestal tie bar bolts. That other plate on the back that's a sander bracket. 
Okay, you can see how we've jacked it and we've got the box to move. Well, now we're in a position now that we're torquing the uh, torque frame, which means the wheel is not sitting completely on the rail. Right, you can see that there, the space under it. But we can't really drop it down. I've got a jack that I put in here to here and force the box down. But I can't do that right now because the pedestal is actually twisting because this side does not have any jacks on it. So this side now is sitting on the ground. So what we need to do is raise the truck frame here up and leave the wheel there. So what we've done is we've taken off the sander. There's the sander bracket. And there's what's left of the sanding pipe. And it's set. It's set in here. And I knocked that out. Right. So now that bar, that flat bar right there, which is this bar right here. That's the pedestal tie bar. It ties this pedestal to this pedestal. And we have to knock that out. Okay, we're gonna take that out. You can see how the truck frame moved up because of the torquing on the other side. So now I can put a jack under here, jack with the other one, and everything should be fine. Three days later, <laughs> the boys, uh, I had to, I couldn't be up here. So Jim Arnott and Matt Schilling actually got the plate out. And, uh, hey Matt, where's that? Uh, the original plate? Yeah. There it is. So they had to do some uh, fancy uh, stuff here with it. So <clears throat> the plate was stuck right here as well as jammed in here. So, um, actually on the other end, Sorry. it was stuck in here. So we had to actually blow that out and it was jammed right around in this point here. So what the guys did is they welded a C channel on and then jacked it out from the from the box here, put a jack in here and actually jack the plate up and 
pulled it out and it worked out pretty good. So now we're going to take the new liner, which is here, and it fits in here like this. And this is a phenolic liner. So there's no welding involved in this one. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, install it and uh, see how see how everything goes here with it. I think it'll go. Uh, I think it'll go pretty good. What do you think of the whole thing? I think uh, I think it was pretty good yesterday. Uh, we got it done, and uh, looking forward to finally finishing it off and uh, getting six thousand six back in service. Yeah, yeah. Uh, All right, is. let's get after it. So we're gonna put the pedestal in or the pedestal liner in. So you put the liner in. And they just clean the junk out of the saddle block. And then put this in. The Fabrica pad you need in there, and then you put the keeper in place. It's the uh, equalizer keeper. You just drop the saddle block in. Okay, so we have the liners in, and we have the saddle block in and the keeper in. So now all we need to do is remove the uh, jack underneath the underneath the equalizer. Okay, and we have to make sure that this hasn't been. See here, this is your this is your shim. So, if you wanted to, you could take the spring out right now. Right. You can take the equalizer spring right out, and we can inspect it, which actually might not be such a bad idea. Okay, so now that we've cut that uh, nut off there, um, not a big deal, but it's, this is, you can take the spring out. You can inspect the springs. All right, clean them, inspect them. See how it's got, it's got, uh, cardboard from uh, the original packing <laughs> and they rebuilt it that's cool there. spring is in good shape it's okay so what we could do now is you get a tape measure and you measure the free length and that tells you if the spring is good or if it's not on both sides so uh let's go and get a tape measure and then we can do that what we're going to do is we're going to uh, measure the free length of it so the inner length and the outer length has different free lengths so um, we went to the manual and uh, I have it written down here. Um, so the inner coil needs to be 15 and 11 sixteenths. Okay, so what you do is you do that and then you take this and you measure it and that's pretty close. Pretty close to 15 and 11 sixteenths right there. So this spring is good. Other spring, which is the out the outer spring, is 15 and 15 sixteenths for free length, and that is 
literally a hair less than than that so this spring is okay as well so uh, both of these springs are good so we'll uh, just we won't paint them we'll just put them back in and uh, carry on with it and all right so we're gonna put this back together now the lower fabrica pad in and then we'll put the two spring nests back together So it'll be okay. Hey. These are heavy. Okay, so that gets set in there like that. And then you take the other Fabrica pad, put the shim on. The shim goes like that. And then the Fabrica pad goes in there and then we get Grant to repaint it and uh, actually we could turn it off. I'll, I'll be I'll be nice <laughs> there we go how, how do you like how do you, how do you like that how he looks pretty good it's <laughs> gonna sit there okay all right now we get to just lower it down Start lowering it Yeah, go ahead. Bring yours down slowly. Go down. These have to be really tight because the vibration of the running on the rail. If they come loose, the plate will drop down. And then you have, this will be free from this. And this keeps the, the uh, pedestals from, from uh, actually splaying at the end, actually, and stressing the truck frame. Keeps everything together and in shape. Yep. That's right. That's it. Okay, so that's, uh, that's about it. Everything is back in place. Pedestal tie bar is on. It's all in there. New liner. And the box is gonna be, it freely moves. And uh, we've checked the spring. And we've put the keeper back in so the spring doesn't move around too much. And everything is good. What do you think? Well, it's nice to finally get this done and now we got a good safe car to uh, to use. Yeah. Looking forward to running it, that's for sure. I agree. <laughs> All right, thanks, Matt. Thanks for your help. You got it.